Let's see how BFS, or Breadth First Search, operates on a graph. Here, we have a graph along with its corresponding adjacency list, which represents its connections. Unlike Depth First Search, which explores as deep as possible along each branch, Breadth First Search doesn't dive deep right away. Instead, it traverses the graph layer by layer, exploring all neighbors at the current level before moving to the next. Now, let's see how the algorithm works in this example. First, we initialize a queue with the starting node, in our case, node A, as the initial value. We also create an empty set to keep track of the nodes we visited. Understanding the queue data structure is essential to grasp how BFS operates. If you're not familiar with queues, we have a detailed animated video on the topic, linked in the description box below. Now, a while loop will run as long as the queue is not empty. First, we remove the leftmost element from the queue and check if it has already been visited. If not, we add it to the visited set, print its value, and mark it in orange to visually indicate that the node has been visited. Next, we append any unvisited neighbors of the current node to the queue. In this case, both neighbors of the node are unvisited, so we add both to the queue. But what about the order? For that, we refer to the adjacency list of the graph, which contains the sequence in which the neighbors are stored. In this case, node B appears before node C in the adjacency list, so we append them to the queue in that order, first B, then C. In the next iteration, we again pop the leftmost element from the queue and check if it has been visited. Since it hasn't, we add it to the visited set, print its value, and color it orange to indicate it's been visited. Next, we append its unvisited neighbors to the queue. Here, node G is the only unvisited neighbor, so we add G to the queue. In the next iteration, we pop element C from the queue, add it to the visited set, print it, and then insert its unvisited neighbor into the queue. Here, two of C's neighbors are unvisited, with node G appearing before node F in the adjacency list. So we'll insert node G first, followed by node F. Next, we pop element G from the queue, add it to the visited set, print it, and then insert its unvisited neighbor into the queue. Next, we pop the element from the queue again. This time, the element is already visited, so we'll skip it and move on to pop the next element. We'll check if the element is visited. If it's not, we'll add it to the visited set, print it, and insert its unvisited neighbors into the queue. Next, the popped element is already present in the visited set, so we will skip it and move to the next one. This time, the popped element is not in the visited set, so we will add it, print its value, and insert its unvisited neighbors into the queue. Next, the popped element is D, which is not in the visited set, so we will add it, print its value, and insert its unvisited neighbors into the queue. Since there are no unvisited neighbors left for this node, we'll skip adding any new elements. Now the queue is empty, meaning the traversal is complete, so the algorithm will stop. Now, let's look at the code. First, this is how to store the graph in an adjacency list using Python dictionaries and lists. Next, we'll start by importing the decay structure from Python's collections module to use as our queue. Then, we define the BFFs function, which takes the graph and the starting node as input parameters. Next, we define a set to track all visited nodes during the traversal, along with a queue that starts with the initial node. We also create an empty list to store the traversed elements in the order they are visited. Next, a while loop runs as long as the queue isn't empty. Inside the loop, we first pop the element from the front of the queue and check if this node has been visited. If it hasn't, we add it to both the visited set and the traversal list. Then, we check each neighbor of the current node. If a neighbor is unvisited, we add it to the queue and continue the process. After the loop completes, we return the traversal list, which contains the nodes in the order they were visited. Now, the time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n plus e, where n represents the number of vertices, or nodes, and e represents the number of edges in the graph. This is because each node and each edge is processed once during the traversal. The space complexity of BFS is big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the graph. 
This complexity arises from the maximum size of the queue, which, in the worst case, can hold all nodes in the graph, as well as the visited set that stores all visited nodes.